Mel McKay. Some of you might recognise me from school. Um, I'm a sports assistant there, but also my background is in science. So what I'm doing here today is just to bring you some really simple science activities that you could be doing at home using just reagents and stuff that you can find in your cupboards. And it's doing things that you can do on your own and that you don't always necessarily have to have an adult um, to help you with. So this is part one of our experiment. What we're going to look at today is bubbles. Now some of you might think, ooh, bubbles, that's a bit boring. But bubbles are actually really, really fascinating and there's a lot of science behind them. And they're really good fun. Adults, children, everybody loves to blow bubbles. So let's press on. The first thing we're going to do, I'm going to ask you to collect a bowl, so a clear bowl preferably, but if you don't have that, any particular bowl, and we're going to put just some normal tap water in your bowl here. Now I've got my lovely assistant with me today, Meredith, my daughter, Hello. and she's going to help with the experiments. So what have I got in here? I've got normal tap water, okay? So normal water, what does it look like? Pretty boring really, not much exciting about it. But what the water does have on the top is almost like this little skin, okay, that's holding it all together. And it makes it quite strong. And the water molecules are all attracted together at the top of that skin, okay? And this is called something called surface tension. So what would happen if me and Meredith were to blow with our straws into the water? a lot, we have a few little bubbles, nothing particularly exciting. So the skin is quite tight and it's not elastic and stretchy enough for us to form a really lovely bubble. Now let's take just some soap, now this is just dishwashing liquid and this is from Aldi's and we're going to add this into our water. So we're going to add a really good, good scoosh in there, we want lots in and we're going to give it a bit of a bit of a mix up with our straw. So we've got a lovely, lovely soapy kind of mixture there. Now, before we do this next thing, must warn you, you always blow through your straw, don't suck through your straw. Because if you suck through your straw, you're going to get a mouthful of... Soapy bubbles! Soapy bubbles. So, let's see what happens now. Once we've added the liquid in, what happens? Can we form some bubbles? amazing. So by adding them soapy bubbles in, we've allowed the surface of that water to become really stretchy and become quite elastic and it allows all these beautiful bubbles to form. So what is a bubble? What is it? Okay. Basically a bubble has three layers, okay. It's this, it's this sort of um, a thin film of soapy water. On the outside you have your soapy um, bubbles in the middle layer you have a layer of water and then in the other layer you have soap again so it's almost like a soapy sandwich and when you blow a bubble what you'll notice is a bubble will always be round okay and why is that why does it always go into a round shape into a sphere well that's the smallest possible shape that it can um, form into and actually it takes less energy to form into that sphere than any other shape, which is why we use that. Now, as Meredith's blowing here, as she's blowing, as we can see, all those little bubbles are all merging together and they kind of lose their kind of round appearance. But you can have lots of fun kind of doing stuff like this. One thing you'll notice about bubbles, what do they do? They pop. They pop, okay. So apart from me sticking my finger into it, or them landing on something that's kind of sharp, okay? The reason that bubbles pop is because that little water layer that we talked about, it dries up and evaporate, evaporates and that causes it to pop. So let's try something. So if I use my dry finger, I'm popping them bubbles. Meredith, can you blow me a few more bubbles? Now if I use a soapy finger, 
and put it in. Ooh, it doesn't pop the bubbles. What it does, the bubbles wrap themselves round anything that is wet that you poke into those bubbles to fill the hole that would have been made. So you could try sticking lots of different things in there, dry and then wet to see what you can do. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to take some of this soapy mixture and I'm going to pour it onto a little tray. So you can either use a tray or if you have a plate, anything that's got kind of flat surface on it and we're going to just pour some of this soapy bubbles on here and we're going to try and blow some more bubbles. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to see how big a bubble we can do and actually you can blow a bubble within a bubble. So if I wet my straw so it's all covered and nice and wet, You can sometimes go within the bubble and blow bubbles in the bubbles. Now, if you're really clever, I've been able to do it three times once, a bubble, then a bubble in that, and then another bubble in that. So this is just another fun way to explore blowing bubbles. Okay, so that at the moment is the end of part one. The next part of our bubbles is going to be taking place out in the garden. So we'll see you soon.